So let's look at some more examples, talk about what makes something good and how we can make these things better. So this is our one example that's not a, a data graph. This is more of a, a, you know, a figure that would be il illustrating, say, our methodology or something like that. This is from uh, a paper I wrote, and it's, uh, it's, yeah. So again, I said it last week, but just to reiterate, everybody can make their graphs better. I can make my graphs better. You guys can make your graphs better. So again, when we're showing examples, everybody should give input and don't just, if I say, if I make reference to something as being mine, that, that I don't care. I want to, want to hear how lame it is, right? It's all good. But in this case, this is just a simple diagram trying to show where the oil went, et cetera. But um, in terms of quantitative, it shows, it's supposed to show, this is a surf, so this is a cross section of the ocean. Here is the surface, 200 meters, 500 meters, 1,000, 1,500 meters. And this has to do with where the oil um, accumulated and then where we saw deposits of the oil, et cetera. Now, this is showing depth, but note how hard it, it's, it's a challenge in three dimensions to see this, right? So if all we were looking at was is this rectangle here, it would be pretty straightforward. But we have stuff that's you know shown here, and so technically there you would come down here. This, this is more of a cartoon to, to illustrate concepts, not be quantitative. But the point remains, three-dimensional projections are a challenge. And you should generally avoid those. Um, you know, diagrams, eh, maybe, maybe not. But certainly with quantitative figures, you guys don't want to have a 3D effect or 3D depth, whatever they call it. Now, you guys might not have seen this type of graph before. There's different names for this. S spider plot, a radar diagram. This is basically analogous to an XY plot, but instead of the X axis going from this side of the screen, say to this side, we actually take that and wrap it around and make it a 360. So the way you read this type of plot is the, z the middle of the bullseye is a zero value. And then as we go out on these, on these radials, on these radians, uh, it, we're getting higher and higher values. So for example, right here is zero. There's two, there's four, there's six, eight, 10, 12. The reason, or, or I mean, so again, in theory, you can do anything in whatever, whatever fashion, but the most common, re, so what, can you guys, do you guys remember seeing this, this type of plot anywhere? Where? Conservation biology. Oh, conservation biology, good. But, but what, what, what type of information was graphed on it? This this figure. So so the, the can you guys think of what might be a good thing to show on this three hundred and sixty? Characteristics. Characteristics of. Like, um, oh <laughs> Something cyclical. The classic thing would be direction, wind direction, classic wind plots. So think of it as this is north, you know east, south, west, and, and if we just, we, you know, we could put on a linear plot, have this be north, northwest, west, you know, like that, but, but, and that works for in the middle of the, of the axes, but on the left and right, that doesn't, that doesn't really work, right, because, because this, if it was a linear axis, this is just as close to this one over here, right, so that's why we wrap it around, does that make sense? We, 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 and so, so most typically that would be something like wind direction or something like your watch, a clock face, right? Same thing. It's not really X and Y. It's really a circular thing, right? Noon is closer to one than it is to six or what have you, right? Similarly, months of the year. If you're plotting something over you know, January, February, March, and you wraps all around, December is really close to, December is as close to January as February is to January, right? So by putting on a linear, a linear um, plot, 
that might be misleading if we're talking about seasonality, let's say. So anyway, so in this case, this was just showing the, the some different uh, categories of the littoral fringe, the, the depth into the water column and bottom of the ocean at different depths. And then uh, some old, the old thinking of the impact and the new thinking of the impact. Okay. What about this? Stare at this sucker for a while. So what's this telling us? What's this, fi what's this figure trying to get at? Species richness has gone down over time. Species richness uh, peaked and then has gone down, right. Right. When you say it's now not native to what native, is it like a change in labeling thing? Like <clears throat> uh, you don't know. Yeah. So this is poorly labeled. So you're not sure what they measured. Presumably plants, because the background is a bunch of grass and trees and stuff, but we don't really know, right? Yeah, you can't really see the, the squares that made it mm -hmm. associated. Right, so the biggest takeaway is do not put a picture behind your graph. <laughs> so I'll say that again. Never put a picture behind your graph. Now, all these things. You're never allowed to use pie charts, all this. Of course, there's always probably going to be an example where something is, you know, you can. But you guys are all still learning to graph. So you guys are all still walking. You can't run yet. I want you guys to all walk really well before we run. So therefore, you're never allowed to put a picture behind a graph. And probably ever. But especially in something like this. Look, we have a black and white photo. Not just black and white. It's not just some... Some, you know, smooth, I don't know, baby's butt gray. It's actually this speckled thing. Look, it's little speckle of black and of white and of light gray and dark gray. It's, it's a very, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a pattern. It's, it's a non-consistent pattern. And then we have our, our plots. Some of them are black, some of them are gray. It just makes it that much harder to see what's going on. Again, your goal is to present your data elegantly and crisply and cleanly. This picture in the back, confusing, gets in the way, right? So that's the first thing. Second thing, it's not properly labeled, right? Species richness, what is that? Plant species richness, all the organism species richness, bacterial species, right? We, we don't know. Um, again, here's the year. So this is probably a case where, is it, is it wrong to have year down here? Well, no, but probably it's Seems fairly obvious to me, 1960, 1970, 1980. It's a line plot, so clearly these things are, are you know, so, so line, a line is the correct element to show here, so that's cool, but we could probably dispense with year, and then we can make this graph even bigger to fill up that space, make the fonts more uh, larger, et cetera. Um, yeah, cool. Sound good? All right. How about this? Now this, I, I should, I, now I, I didn't say this before, but I will say all of the things I'm showing you guys are real. I've not made up any of these things. These are all real figures. This particular figure was presented to a congressional investigative body by the Pentagon. Exactly like this. So I didn't crop anything out. I didn't edit anything out, nothing like that. They, they, they blew it up on a poster board and put this in, and a four-star general presented this to your Congress. So why don't you guys tell me what it means? Something's going down. OK, that's, that's what they're trying to tell you. Presumably, yeah. So presumably, it's a it's a reduction of troop levels in Iraq. Presumably, American or coalition. I feel like I see some dates next to the first uh, bars, but as it gets later in the fourth reduction, I don't I don't see that. Anymore. Right. So Hunter's saying, look, it, it seems to be something that seems to be like a date, September 07. Is that September 7th? Is that September 2007? Right. But it looks date-like, right? Okay, cool. Uh, and here's another one. July, is that July 8th or July 2008? Okay, probably some kind of date. But then we see 
September 7th, December, let's assume this is September 2007, December 2007, July 2007, and then there's nothing else, right? So presumably this is some kind of axis of time, kind of hard to figure out. And then we have this thing that is, here we go, December 2007, okay, cool. March 2008, okay, that makes sense. July 2008, okay, that, make, that makes sense. Wait, what? March 2008. What else about this figure? Right, there's some magical star, star magical stars lassoing the line. Oh, thanks. And here's this magical star is lassoing that line. This magical star is confused. So is this one. So is this one. But this one can throw really horizontally. What else? Right. What the hell is this? Presumably, this is something like thousands of troops or something. But who knows, right? Because it's not labeled. There's weird spacing. And then it's, it's 20. And then it's 15. And then it's 12. And then it's 10. And it's 7. And it's, what, it's, what is that, right? <laughs> I guess we're going to Vegas and picking lottery tickets or something. What else? Uh, oh yeah, okay, okay, yeah. So these question marks we don't know. Okay. There is no zero point. There's, yeah, there's there's no zero. Presumably this is zero, but you know it's all everything else is so weirdly spaced. Is that right? Anything else? It just stops. It just stops. Right. Right, but then also there's all this stuff. So presumably this is the different tasks that the deployed troops are gonna be doing. And clearly they're trying to make some argument leading. We are leading and then we're not leading. And we're doing, we're doing something called Overwatch, which sounds like important, I guess, right? Yes, yes, yes. So my argument is going to be no matter how you use, of course, there's maybe some slight tweaks if we were giving something in a PowerPoint presentation for a job talk versus in a, in a uh, where, where you might be narrating it, such as perhaps this general was during this, versus if it's in a, a poster or a thesis standalone. But my suggestion to you is that even in the situation where you will be stare, you'll be in the room with the with the data interpreting it, it's still better to have everything properly labeled. Because you're gonna have Karen, you're gonna have Alex, you're gonna have all these people in the back of the room that aren't paying attention and that or are distracted or their cell phone rings or whatever. And so if you have a really kick butt graphic up there, even if I'm sitting here explaining it to you, people that get distracted either intentionally or accidentally, they can glance up and they can follow it, right? So a well-designed graph visually reinforces it, even if I'm saying it you know, orally to you. So, that, so this is a bad design no matter what I would, I would suggest to you matter who's there to spend an hour telling you what it means should be able to take it on your own okay we're not going to talk about powerpoint yet or slideware yet but again these are all real things so i'll just you know freak out on that and then oh forecast locations for me okay so here we go what is this you guys love maps. I, I know because you guys always like, like tell me how much you like maps. They are weather stations, yes. So what's the green thing? A watershed. Ooh, good guess. Yeah, natural guess is watershed, but it, it's not a watershed. But yeah, but good guess. We don't know. First, the first answer is we don't know, right? 
It's actually the range of this particular project where they're trying to measure the weather. And so it just happens to be the area where their sensors work over. Right? Who knows what that was though, right? Poorly labeled, random, random, uh, you know, stuff. What else? What, what else, aside from forecast locations for me, do not use all caps. Some people seem to really like that. Do not do that. It just makes it harder to read. Was that background really on there? Yes. Everything here is real. I did, I did not, <laughs> I have not made, <laughs> I've not, the only thing I've done is every once in a while I've deleted a name just so, you know, no one is embarrassed or whatever. But, but I've not, that's the only thing on a couple of these slides I've done. <laughs> so what's MAPE? Who knows, right? Now, maybe if this was the 17th slide, and, I, and we've been talking about defining what MAPE was, maybe that would be okay. But as a standalone thing, no, that's not okay. What else? Speaking just, okay, obviously the insane background. Do not have an insane clown posse background. That's lame. <laughs> what else? I don't, I don't see any data. I just see points. Okay, okay, right. So maybe they could use a, you know, density plot or a bubble graph or something just to show how well the stations work in the network or something like that. Okay, good. We could have shaded in their area of interest. And we'll right. Kind of distinguish it from right. So maybe slightly greener or slightly darker or slightly something. What else? Or the inverse, like take away color from the right. that you're not sampling. Right. Okay. So it it should be fairly obvious, but nevertheless. Not a bad thing to label, what Florida, Alabama, that kind of stuff. Good. Maybe folks aren't from this part of the country, so those, not, they can't remember where Alabama is or something like that, so that's not a bad thing. What else in terms of basic GIS stuff? I would use a, a different kind of scale bar. Right. Scale bar, way too small. Right? Hard to read. Look at all this real estate. We have all this white. It's not as if we didn't have any space to put it in. It's right there. So why not make it bigger and more easily readable? What else about the scale bar? It, it looks like it might have some strange in it weird. Yeah, so if you just make the default scale bar, it's going to make it, you know, 37.3, you know, kilometers or whatever. So really, if I'm just picking some random thing, I'm randomly going to make it 140 miles long. Like what, what the heck's that, right? 100 miles. 150 miles, some more natural breaks. But then also, it's in miles. You're not allowed to do that. We are what we refer to as scientists. So, you know, I guess you could put it in stones, you know, or something like that. We use SI units. So we use kilometers. That's what you guys should be using. Now, some of you guys might be working on something that maybe is interacting maybe like hunters some is interacting with the construction industry doing dredging or something so maybe maybe you also want to include miles maybe but your default is always in this case kilometers and then if you wanted to also have miles you could but you should never ever have it just you know inches or feet or miles and then lastly um north arrow lame that sucks, right? So, um, firstly, we have space to make it bigger and make it more readable and understandable. Even if, one second, even if this was the only space we could put it in, you could use one of the N, N arrows, right? So that, so that even if this was all the space we had, it could be more obvious which, what that was in the direction. Hunter. Yeah, I agree with you. I would just use an N. Right, right, right. Okay, cool. Anything else about this one? Ooh, more seizures. The data analysis! Again, they really want you to know that. Yeah. So this is a table. And now, of course, you guys could use tables. Nothing necessarily wrong with a table. But a screenshot of Excel, that sucks. You are not allowed to do that. And I'd say... Once every other year or so, somebody does this in their thesis. So they run out of time, they're freaking out, and they just kind of screen grab, insert thing. 
No, that's lame -o. That's bad. So one, it's lame. But two, even, even in the universe of lameness that this is, it, look, it doesn't even say what this is. Variable one, variable two, right? It's not even, it's not even complete. Even if they didn't have time to, to create their own table and a, an appropriate um, visualization package, this is just lame, yeah. Right. Yes. On, right. On so many levels. Yes. Right. Exactly. So, significant figure. And then to say nothing of the the brain fart that is the background. I don't know what the heck that is. Right. I mean, again, does that help us bring clarity, or does that act as visual graffiti to pull our eyeballs off of the table? It totally does. Right. So that that serves no purpose, except to make it harder, and or more distracting for you to try to glean some insight from the, from the uh, information. Ooh, look at that. So molecular biologists are a source of a fantastically large number of bad graphics. So what is this? It's obviously a table or an attempt at a table. Hard to, who knows, right? Icky row, right? It's like a it's like a really bad White Stripes album kind of thing. Or like a Jamaican reggae guy. Or it could be a Jamaican reggae dude. So so setting aside that we can't suss out what's going on here. You know, cross your eyes or squint your eyes and just look at this purely from a design layout, independent of what we're specifically trying to show. It sucks. Right? Let's look at this. Let's look at, presumably this is photosynthetically active radiation per cubic meter, but who knows. Um, but check it out. So here's 1.8 times 108, okay. But then the 1.2, it, it's not parallel, right? It's off set to the right. Similarly, the 1.0 and the 1.5, they're not even, right? Right, it's probably supposed to be 10 to the 8th, but, but, but the point is, even setting that aside, even though even that they maybe messed that up, just purely from a layout standpoint, this sucks. So knowing nothing about, not even if, if you're, not, you're not even a scientist, if you just blur your eyeballs and look at that, this looks wrong. This doesn't look right. This doesn't look right. This doesn't look right. To say nothing of the fact that you have text on top of other text, right? So what this says is this says, screw you to the audience, literally. It says, I, I don't care about you at all. I don't care about you getting anything from my stuff. I'm so smart, I don't care about you. I'm doing this because somebody made me, right? So. Even setting aside the what is par and what is NJS555 and all that, you can't even show us the courtesy of not having text on top of other text, right? Your job, you guys are in starting in your career. You need to take every opportunity to show people that you are a, a good communicator. I'm going to... I'm going to show you what I've done. I'm going to help. I'm going to take you along on my journey to show you all the cool stuff that I've found, right? You are not going to give them the equivalent of the data middle finger, which is what this is, right? You're not going to put all the burden on them to suss out what you even did. We're going to make it easy. We're not going to have some random words here and then some other thing that's not aligned and, and three panels of a table and there's one missing, and right? That's just, that is... Um, massively disrespectful to your audience. Now, maybe what happened here is maybe this was made on a Mac and they showed it on a PC or made on a PC and showed on a Mac. Probably wouldn't be that way, but, but the point is you need to double check. So if you're going to go give a job talk or a talk to somebody that might give you an internship or something like that, the onus is on you to guarantee that your pre now, if it's a printed thing or something, that's one thing. But if it's a if it's if it's say electronically 
projected as this is, the onus is on you. It's not that that guy has a different kind of computer than you or a different uh, you know, program or something. So you will take it upon yourself if, if, the, if, if in case like this you're doing it on, a, on PowerPoint, you're also going to save this as a PDF version. So if you get up and you discover that, oh my gosh, this is, this is displaying my data incorrectly, you can pull out your other version and professionally show it. And it shows, hey, I respect you. Even though there's some miscommunication here between our software or my whatever, I've got you covered. Let me show you this, right? And that shows that you guys, again, are really putting in the care to respect your audience. Again, thank you, molecular biologists, for showing us how to not do things. So this is some kind of gel, right? Some kind of plot electrophoresis or something. Uh, what I want to say is about this, this, so if I asked you guys to tell me this 3.5, what font size is that three up here on the screen? You're going to make some guess. And we know from our friends that study visual perception, you're going to estimate that the font is slightly larger than it actually is. No, because it's a dark background with a light font. If I swap that like this and showed you that exact same font, the exact same figure, but just inverted, I probably should have done that. You're going to, and I said, hey, tell me what size you think this font is. You're going to slightly underestimate the font. That's because of the physiology of your eyeball. So your the, the light sensors in the back of your eyeball are cued in. We have color things. We have, you know, light uh, se sensors. So the, our cells that are responding to light are much more sensitive than the ones that, you know, we don't see dark. We just see light. So what in effect happens is we're, we're, we're over primed to sample light. So in the case of this situation, the, the, photons that are making up this five are hitting our eyeball and that brightness bleeds into the darkness. And so when we look at the five here, that five actually looks a little thicker, a little fatter. The, the line is a little heavier weight. We perceive it to be slightly heavier than it is because the white is essentially widening the font. Here it's the reverse. Here the white around the R is is pushing in so it has the effect of making the r look a little bit thinner than it actually is so when given a choice it's always going to matter if it's you know a, a sunny room with a bright sun you know shining on the, the thing but generally speaking all things being equal you're generally going to want to have a dark background and a light font okay more on that when we get into powerpoint and poster printing and stuff but generally generally better to have um, a dark background light font. Then the fonts appear bigger. Then, you know, a dark background and a, and a, and a white access line. Then that access line looks a little bigger. Okay, the next thing is let's talk about the types of fonts that are being shown here. Now, is anybody taking French? Ooh, okay. So there, it's, it's good. So let's test Aspen, shall we? Let's see how good she is. So this is a type, so the family of fonts that this belongs to is called sans serif. Yeah, without, that's right, without something. This type of font, and so a classic example of this would be something like Arial or Courier or something like that. Classic one here, this is called a serif font. So this is one like Times, Times New Roman, something like that. So serif is foot. So if we look at this, let's look at the R right here. The R is a line, right? A downward slash, and then that's all it is. And, oh, it, and it stops. Text up on the top has a little bit. Right. And so here, let's look at this P. Here, this downward slash for the P. But then look, on either side of the downward slash, there's a little lip, right? That's the foot. So this is, this is essentially a footed font, and this is a font with no feet. 
generally speaking, when you guys are doing your posters, when you're doing a PowerPoint, I want you to use sans serif fonts. Again, this comes from our friends that study perception and visual learning. And what, if, what we find is when you read this CGK75R, when it's a sans serif font, you read it much fat. You read it faster than if it was a, a footed font. So generally speaking, you want to use um, something like Arial or something similar. The only exception is when, and again, this is from our culture, we read left to right. The only exception is when the text that's being displayed is not horizontal. So we, we can imagine the text being at 45 degrees or like right here, 90 degrees. Actually, you read slightly faster when, in that situation when you have the, the, the footed text. Apparently it helps us, if you kind of glance at it, it, it makes like a line, like see this unknown? It's almost like a line that's made there. The disc, it's almost like a line. Apparently that helps us when we're not reading our normal side to side. So technically, this is this is okay. This is, but you know we have we have this non-footed and this footed. Technically, that's that's appropriate, but in reality, don't do that. In reality, you want to have one font consistently throughout. It just looks better in terms of the overall design of the of the um, graphic. Okay. All right. Look at that epicness. What do you guys think about this? How can we, how, what's wrong with this figure? Yeah, trap success, right? Good. Yeah, so it's it yells at us the trap success and percent and year, right? Do not, don't use all capital. Skunk. Skunk and Fox. And Fox. <laughs> That's right. The percent looked like some weird picture text thing going on. Right. It's because there's actually some, some other text, like a black something beneath it. So that's messed up. Yes, it's dark purple, it's light blue, and then it's black, and then we have the Purple Mountain's Majesty on the bottom here for who the hell knows why. I have no idea. None of this adds to the clarity. None of this helps us focus on the data or interpret the data. It's all chart junk. It's all stuff that's getting in the way and visually distracting us and taking us away from the, the main core of the figure. What else? What else is wrong? Or yeah. Are those the vertical lines supposed to be error bars, or is that what is that? Yeah, good. Right. So we don't know. So we don't know. Is this is this a mean? Is this a standard error? What is this max min? We don't. It's not labeled, so we don't know. Good. What else? And is that a you know a foul or whatever to have the line that bar go below the axis? Ooh, excellent. Okay, so this one goes just below the axis. This one goes below, and then it, go, it starts at minus five. So they caught native five foxes. Yeah. Yes. So they, <laughs> they birthed foxes or something. So <laughs> what most likely happened here is this person used the auto plot routine in whatever their graphing tool was. And because, and, and this is a real value, we can have this, let, let's assume this was average and let's assume this was a standard error. Y you can get that where the, where the error bar stretches beyond zero, the, the, the zero line. And so then what happened was the, the, the program just automatically resized the y-axis or, or rescaled the y-axis and made it go and covered, you know, correctly the entire range of data. And so some of the statisticians would say, oh, that's correct. But in reality, they're totally high, right? That's lame. There's no such thing as is as successfully trapping minus 5% foxes, right? It just, it just doesn't happen. So while mathematically we can see that, that how we got to that solution, that does not help us as ESRM folks. So the, the better thing is to make this go to, make this go to zero and, and just have this error bar obviously hit that. We know that we can't distinguish, again, assuming this is standard error, that we can't distinguish our value from zero. So that's good. We don't need to go into this weird mathematical, irrational, you know, unreal number land. 
So this is this person plotting this and not caring about that and just going forward. What else? Anything else we could do better? The way that they did the trend line. Trend like line, okay. They could have done different thicknesses and overlaying those. Okay, they possibly could have had the, the thickness of the line different. And so, so this actually isn't a trend line. This is actually a line plot. But yeah. Or I think it's a line plot. Is there a problem with this at all? How else can we make this better? What about the x-axis? Right. 99, 98, 97, 96, 95, 93. What happened to 94? Right? So by using a lot, by using this, so we're implying that each of these things is evenly spaced, but it's not plotted that way. Right? So that's messed up. So either the line is not appropriate or it should be broken, or something, this is messed up. And then on top of that, we said before, if we have it properly labeled with year, it's probably obvious it's a year. Not in this case. In this case, they had to put year, because 99, what the hell is that? Got 99 problems and that skunk ain't one or something? <laughs> right? It's just, it's so lame on so many, it's epically lame, actually. That's why I use this gra graph all the time. Right? It's like, really, you made that? Somebody actually made this and, and actively said this was an acceptable way to Try to tell something. Anything else? Okay, cool. Ooh, do we like pie charts? No. No pie charts suck. <laughs> Check it out. Here's 3%. Here's 4%. Here's 4%. Does that, does that look right to you? 4%, 10%. Right? So again, the problem with the pie chart is, is you look at it, and again, from our friends in the visual processing field, when you look at pie chart, this is what you see. You see wedge. You see purple. Uh, you see area is what you see. That's not how a pie chart makes its plots itself. A pie chart takes this 360 degree circle. And if we say, ah, 50% said yes, 50% said no, it would say, what is half of 360? That's 180 degrees. So it's gonna come through and it's gonna go 180 degree arc. Whoop, and that's how it's gonna determine. So what's, what's, what's made is the, essentially the amount of the circumference. That's what is the actual comparison. But that's not how we compare it, right? How we compare it is we look at this whole volume. That's why you and I visually are very bad at interpreting the, the value from a pie chart. That's why if you're going to use something, the, the donut charts, which is just sort of the outer edge of this, those are, if you have to use that, those are much better in terms of the, the format. But also, what the heck is this? I don't know. It's a bunch of islands, crooked islands. I don't know. And then it's some amount of square area. So it's the total amount of the islands broken off into these things, I guess. Oh, fail. What the hell is that? I don't know. It's sort of a seizure. It's some type of bad thing in your brain. Right? Obviously, that sucks. Oh, another bad sucky pie chart. But if you stare at it, you then get things that say things like, uh, 53%? Is this? <laughs> and 47% and 62%? <laughs> right? Lame. Lame, 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 lame. How about this one? Oh, okay, good. Right, now, so we have all this text. Perfect, yes. Yeah, so this would be a good a good candidate for having the text just be nice and horizontal and not turn 90 degrees. That's the first thing. Okay, good. What else? Why, did some of them, why are some of them just points and some of them have 
Ooh, good question. So we don't know what the points are. We don't know what the um, what the bars are. Probably they represent some measure of the range, but but we don't know. So that's good. Yeah. What 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 is that? What else? Mm -hmm. Right. So it's not time. Here's Croatia, Czech Republic, Czech Republic, Moldova, Greece, Italy. Okay. Well, maybe. I mean, we're not really going. We're not going e east to west, but kind of. And then wait. But then we get to Spain. Okay. Spain. 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 Okay. Then the USA. Okay. 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 Then Argentina and then China. Okay. Maybe. But then we're in Indonesia and then India. So it's not even like, you know, east to west, right? So there's that kind of strangeness. Um, so yeah, so why that way? Um, and this happens frequently with you guys. So, so you, you plot something and you just happen to plot it because that was the way you collected the data. Now that can be okay, but again, and that's not technically wrong if, if this, whatever the heck this is, the Kwai Kwan Tang River, if that was the value, that's, you know, it's not, it's not saying that the value is wrong. But again, the goal is how can we help our, our audience more easily interpret it, see patterns, see trends. So they were probably going to want to group stuff on some maybe more logical way. Also, maybe this is cool, or maybe we can do things like leave off China, 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 and instead draw maybe in this case, a horizontal line and then write China on that line. Similarly, take out USA, draw a line linking the USA sites and then write USA, right? So we can probably declutter this visually by, by uh, not having all the words sort of embedded in there. That would probably help. Um, what else? Yeah, good. It might be total DDT, but who knows? It might, might be a, a daughter product of DDT. Just from that, I'm not sure. Anything else? I think this is a great example of why, of how um, grid lines can help, right? So in this case, if we're far from the x-axis, if we're way over here, and if we didn't have the grid lines, we'd see this and we oh shoot, what's that value? Uh, I gotta go way over here, right? So grid lines help with that, visually help you better guesstimate what the approximate value is. Anything else about this x about this uh, y axis? So what kind of axis is that? What kind of scale is that? Logarithmic, right, yeah. So that's not wrong. There's, that's the total fine thing. But this might be the kind of thing when people are just glancing at this, many times people aren't expecting that. So it's not wrong. That's the kind of thing you might want to put like in the legend or something. Note the y-axis is logarithmic or, or whatever, right? So that, then, then it's totally clear that we're not trying to mislead someone. That real, But, you know, hey, just to be clear, this is maybe not what you're normally used to encountering. It's this situation. Cool. Anything else? How about that one? So, you like it, don't like it? Who likes it? Show of hands. One, two. Most of you guys don't like it. So, you guys like it. Why do you like it? What do you like about this plot? It has a lot of information. Okay, so it's definitely data dense. Okay, good. Okay, so there's a lot of information in here. So we see the, the actual um, deviation from the annual temperature, presumably, in, I don't know, I guess degree C, since it says over here, but it'd be nice to make sure this was labeled degree C. We don't have, it doesn't say year on the bottom, but that's, that's pretty obvious what it is. It's 1951, 1980, here's these years. Um, note, there's no, actual y-axis line. Similarly, on this so-called yy, uh, there's no plot. You like that or dislike that? It's 
So you don't like it. So this is one of those examples where, right, graph and then see if we can take away. What can we take away? Does it? It's already kind of got its own grid on there in the lane. Right. So here the grid line is, is um, imposed on this. It looks like it's a cutaway. But in, in practice, how you do you just make a white grid line in, in it. So, so visually, you can see these guys are matching up. But this is still fair. Most of the data is over here on the right side of the graph. And the labels are way over here. So it might be nice to, regardless if there is a line or isn't a line, it might be nice to have those maybe labeled over here a little bit, right? That might help us more quickly determine stuff. Anything else about this? So here's El Nino years in red. Here's La Nina in blue. All years in green. So th these guys are labeled, but what's this? There's a gray, there's an orange, there's a blue. What does that mean? Yeah, I think the orange corresponds to El Nino and the blue corresponds to La Nina. Is Possibly, but this is red. So yeah, but then this El Nino is low. So yes, I, th I think I think they so they they they, they will go ahead and labeled this the, the trend lines here, but they didn't label what the bars colorations were. So that would be something we want to label, right? All right, cool. Ooh, ouch! Sorry, painful. How about this one? Okay, so Dan, so, Dan, so so there's maybe too many words in here. Maybe we can do this more eloquent eloquently or something. Yeah. There's Okay. Anything else? What about uh, this is the elevation, and then this is the this is the percentage of area that is. What's that? What elevation? Uh, in meters. No, I mean, but like what elevation was indicated? Well, I think I think you're on this guy. I think you're on this line. So that so that. So that 40% of the drainage area is uh, whatever, less than, I don't know what that is, 1,200 meters or so. So maybe this is a subtle thing, but I would say that generally speaking, probably we would, uh, okay, I didn't mention this before. X-axis, Y-axis is how we typically think about it. More mathematically, we would say X-axis f of x, right? Meaning this is x and then this is a function of x. If there was no relationship, we would see on average a horizontal line. And that would say that essentially x is going up and down and having no influence on this variable, right? Whereas if x changes, goes up, goes down, we see some kind of, say, line or or inverse line or something like that, then, then, then X somehow influences Y. Generally speaking, we're probably talking about elevation. Okay, sorry, and the last bit of that is, so we then call X the, you know, so X, F of X, the independent variable, the dependent variable, right? Because Statistically, if we're talking about a causal relationship, we're usually thinking of this is going to vary and then this is going to depend on whenever that varied or however that changed. So generally speaking, it's probably not the best thing to say percentage and meters. It's probably better to have meters down here, right? And then what that does to percentage. Having said that, this is sort of the exception to the rule that's probably okay because we visually, when you and I think of stuff, we tend to think of here's a high elevation top, low elevation low. This is sort of a, a natural thing. We Humans like to have elevation on the y-axis, just like depth into the ocean, same thing. Typically, you'd plot that inversely, but when we talk about depth in the ocean, we usually plot it um, as the depth on the y-axis. So that's kind of a convention. Okay? Oh. Ouch. Okay, so I'll tell you guys a story. So this is when I went up. So I was at my postdoc, 
and I was with uh, my postdoc advisor, a super famous dude. His lab was this big famous lab with all these important people in there, and then me. I was I wasn't important. Everybody else is important. Um, and so it was a relatively large lab. So there was maybe five postdocs like me. There's maybe uh, six, seven PhD students, and maybe you know eight or nine undergrads kind of thing. So, and then we had staff and we had, so we, we basically would fill this, this GIS lab here, basically when we have our lab meetings. So I've been up there for a little bit and been doing some work. And this was the first, I mean, I gave a job talk, but, but this was my first presentation, my real presentation. So I was coming in and going to give a talk to my postdoc advisor and all these smart people, right? So, okay, I'm getting all excited. And and I make this figure that some of you have seen in my restoration ecology class. I make this figure, and we're talking about restoration. And so there's a line. The good line is green. Because why? Because it's good. And what's red? Bad, right? So of course we use that. Of course we use that. So red, our society has a long history with. Fire engines are red. The sirens on the top of the fire engines are red. Blood is red, right? Red is danger, warning, bad, stay away, stop at the stop sign, right? All that stuff. Green is a, for us, culturally says, you know, go, right? So usually when we're doing a figure, it's natural to say, hey, the good thing, the thing that's getting better, that's going in the positive direction, let's make that a green color. The thing that's not going well, let's make that a red color. So when it came to my graph, I made it red. Or the bad thing red, the bad, the bad trend line red, the good trend line green. And okay, all right, great. I'm in there sitting there giving my talk. I'm blah, 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 blah. And I'm talking, I'm getting ready to go on the next slide. And all of a sudden my postdoc advisor goes, whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Where the hell's the, where's the, where, where's the, the good line? And I said, what? He says, where's the good line? I said, oh, it's the green one. Green one? What the hell is a green one? I said, uh, and then I started getting nervous. I was like, uh, I'm thinking like, what? What am I not? What? It's the green one's right there. It's like, what is going on? And so I said, uh, it's the one right there. Sh Sean, how many people, how many males in the U.S. population, what percentage are colorblind? And I said, uh, uh, and I literally had no idea. I said, uh, I don't know. And he said, I, I should have looked this up before I, I told you. But it's, it's like 17%. It's like, 17%. I said, uh, oh, okay. Yeah, well, I'm colorblind. I can't tell. What are you, an idiot? Label those lines better. I was like, oh, okay, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm an idiot. And then, you know, and then I proceeded to like totally chunder the rest of my talk. And I was all like, all like embarrassed. <laughs> so I finished up. Go back down to my desk and my technician is with me. Now my technician was one of, was an undergrad at UCLA when I was doing my PhD and I and he dove with me for a long time on my research projects. And so when I went up to Stanford, I brought him up with me. So I brought him up and hired him. He became my tech. So I walked down and he's kind of giggling and everything. He's like, oh. I was like, damn dude, I didn't know I didn't know Paul was was colorblind. Oh shoot man. And he's just laughing. He's like and I said, oh, man, I can't believe it. I said, who, you know, who would know, who, who would think that he was colorblind? He goes, well, there's a lot of people that are colorblind. I'm like, oh, yeah, right. And he goes, well, I'm colorblind. And I said, what? He goes, yeah. I said, dude, I showed you these graphs. Why didn't you tell me that you couldn't tell which one was green and which one was red? He said, well, you know, I figured, like, he, everybody else could see it. I was like, what? <laughs> so, anyways, then we had a conversation. But... Anyway, the point is, some people are red-green colorblind. Some are, are orange-green colorblind. So there's a whole series of rights. The point is, some, so then what I did was that figure, I changed it. So instead of having a solid red line and a solid green line, I made it, I forget what I did, but you know, solid red line and a dotted green line. Don't give up on the aesthetics, right? Clearly, Making the good stuff green and the bad stuff red, that helps most people, right? Intuitively get what's going on. So don't abandon that. But let's just add something. So in the case of this, perhaps it's maybe making the red bars cross-hatched, let's say. So we still have the red and green, and most people will get that. But then the, the folks that are a bit uh, challenged with their color situation, they can similarly understand which ones are in which group and which are in the other group. 
So a little bit of good design is good. We do not have to abandon all our stylistic things because someone has a particular um, condition. That's cool. Let's just make sure everybody can, can see it. So in this case, um, the just pure red and pure green, probably not a good idea. Also, just looking at it, it kind of hurts your eyes a little bit, I think. At least hurts my eyes a little bit. Right, that, that, that green is so bright, it kind of jumps around the white. What else? What else about this figure? What is it? Who knows? It's civil environmental engineering, Aspen, clearly. Come on. <laughs> right, so well, I don't know. Is that programs? We don't know what's not labeled. And then we have the zero, one, two, three, four, four, four. what the hell is that? Who knows, right? And then the little dotted. Right, then there's this dotted line that somehow is, is clearly important because they put that dotted line in. Maybe it's a maximum level, maybe it's a min, I don't know, right? But here's, here's a, probably a good example of, do we really need this top x-axis? Is that really helping us anyway, right? Okay, good. Ooh, ouch, ouch. Cuckoo, cuckoo, yellow submarine, what's going on? Some kind of crazy psychedelic, something's going on here. A great example of how you should never have a 3D plot. What, what, that, uh, it's, what is that? I don't know. Let's just leave it. Okay. Cross what about that ground molding. Yeah, right. Ground molding. <laughs> what's going on with this one? Months. 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 Something about time. Right, right. So sometimes, now I, I don't, I'm not going to go so far as to say this is a well-designed plot, but, but sometimes when we do make a well-designed plot, we think it's all good, and then our data just doesn't cooperate. So in some cases, even though you followed all the right rules, you followed all the right conventions, whatever, it just, eh, the way the data falls out, it, it just, eh, you know, we got to do something else, some other representation. It's just, it's just not really helping. Um, but then, yes, so here's another clear one where most likely, like, look, here is, here is this plot, and it's sort of the center left of the, of the, um, you know, label is kind of offset, but then here it's basically in the middle, but then here it's also kind of offset, and it's just, it's just very squirrely in terms of the labels as well. How about that? There's a map. You guys love maps, right? So what about this? What do you think about this? Cluttered. cluttered? Well, cluttered in which way? Just, I don't know, like the flow of all the different um, like text boxes. Right. Yeah, so there's kind of like a blur and a blur and a blur and a blur. So it's hard to take, it's, it's hard for us to be focused visually on what the authors are, are trying to illustrate. What else? Right, so they're, they're clearly trying to say something about... There's 50 states in the Union, and that's, it's ranked 51st, so how is it possible? Right, I think it's, oh, well, yeah, right, good. So how is that probably, I think it's because they consider Washington, D.C. DC a separate thing, usually in terms of voting, but, but right, good point. How about this? Population, oh yeah, Karen, go ahead. Right, right, good. So the age thing, right, exactly. And then check this out. Uh, population per electoral vote. So in other words, the idea here is how concentrated is, right. Mm -hmm. And so here, a, right, the color ramp is, I mean, and it's not wrong, but I think generally people think larger volume more more dense, right? So, so, so the the color ramp is an interesting choice. So this is saying that each each per I think they're trying to say each person in um, Wyoming has more power on a per capita basis than do people in New York. I think is what they're trying to say, but you kind of have to work at it, right? That's that's not bad, but it's maybe not the most elegant way to show that. And it's not the title. Yeah, not a title. How about that? Wow. What is it? Is Dan. <laughs> Dan is, what is it? <laughs> I'm 
I'm not sure what it means, but I think, I think just visually they're trying to say, here's this variable, here's this variable that's, that's yeah, it also shows the, uh, do you have all the, the, the magenta in your printer, but it says, it says, it says, here's redness, right? Whatever this variable is, redness. This variable is yellowness. This variable is blueness. And then we're adding these three things together and we get some crazy crap thing, right? So intellectually, that maybe sounded like a good idea. Like, okay, cool, yeah, mm-hmm. But the problem is we have all these random color combinations and how do, what? So in other words, we have this purple and then this blue and you know this purple and this magenta and you know it's it, it, it taking something quantitative from this is really hard the layout is nice though like yeah. if there were something else in the layout map, right cool. right so they, they clearly thought a little bit to show that this area here represents this much red this yeah. right so they, they they've made an effort but it, it, i would argue that this is this is hard to take away, you know, how does this blue compare to this blue and this blue, right? Like, eh, mm, uh, compared to this blue, right? I mean, it's, it's tough. Now, maybe if this was an online interactive thing where we could hover and it would pop, maybe then. But speak, and, and so, yes, okay, so that, that brings me to, let's look at this. Right. Right, so some designs by their nature, even we just can't get the fonts or the whatever that much bigger, and you, you need to be able to easily read your stuff. So, so that might be a poor design if, if by definition you can't make things big enough for people to read. So here's just a, a, a small example of a few things, just since we're talking about maps. So this is, this is uh, so some test things I was putting on my webpage. Um, now, you don't know what this is, but uh, geographically, it's showing something, something distributed over space. What, what can you guys take out away from this? Population. Could be population. Could be, crime. Could be crime. So each thing is, each plot is this light, uh, you know, trans, transparent red. So it is plots overlap it's analogous to a heat map right and that this is there's a lot of overlapping dots here not so much so this is that this is a this is a, a, a jpeg this is this is a, a static graphic that i copied from the program that i made it with and so this is just me screwing around trying to play with some different things so here's red here's orange but this dot is a little bit thicker than that so I hmm, wonder which one's easier to read. Then this one is actual. So this is static pasted image, static pasted image. This is computer code that's being drawn from another website. So it's doing on the fly. So if I change the graphic, this will change. Here is uh, now this one, one from um, uh, a company called or, uh, a program called Mapbox. This one is data wrapper. So this is the same kind of idea, but this is interactive. So you can go in and, and play and see what the values of these things are. Then here's some random table. And then here's another interactive one which, which uh, makes an actual heat map, right? And then this one, you can do things like interact with the data, right? So, so all the stuff that you guys are gonna make for me, for our posters, for our, your thesis, static. Right? And you're going to insert it in there. We don't have enough time to get into the world of fully interactive data presentations, but I'll be sharing with you guys some tools if you guys are so interested and if, and if it makes sense for your data, maybe it doesn't make sense for your data, you can try some of these products. Increasingly, our, our default, our, our you know, traditional graphing tools can generate code to put on the web. Or I'll show you guys a suite of tools where, that you can use that will generate code that you can put on the web. And, and you could have you know, an interactive presentation of your, of your data, which again, maybe not for everything, but maybe a representative figure, maybe your key figure, maybe that would help, or maybe that would help tell your story on your blog. So that, that's available to you guys. 
Ooh, look at that. Good, bad? Bad, why bad? Overlap, okay, yeah, especially here, the OECD in Spain, right, good. Anything else? Okay, so maybe it could be better with our with our uh, axes, and, and everything could be bigger and easier to read. Okay, what about this? Ouch! Three D. We hate three D, right? Here's a classic case why we hate three D. So here's here's these three D plots, but then let's say this value. What what the hell? Am I going to draw it from this point, this point, which point, and then you know here's the back. Uh, um, grid line but so they come here but then i have to come down here to read it's 0 0.05 right it's just it's it's really bad even if this wasn't 3d again another case where even if this is a well-designed plot maybe the way our data fell out it's just this plot maybe it's just everything's on top of each other you can't really see much Ooh, favorite type of Ron movie romank i love romank Right? Please, this is just sucks. Oh, another pie chart. No pie graphs. No pie. Zero, zero, zero. This one kind of gives me seizures. It's a little bit of the, like, you know, one of those tests at the eye doctor. You're like, what is, th is this moving? Is there a dog in here or something, right? Um, but this does have a nice detailed figure legend. So at least, at least when you, if you read through here, this will actually tell you what these things are. Okay. Um, okay. How about that? Weird there you go. Wait, now? <laughs> so this was, so here we go. No y-axis maybe that's okay but in this case not even tick marks again maybe that's okay you got to see how that plays out uh what clearly happened with this person is they uh they use the default use the default um spacing and they said hey let's label the bars and so we put a number on there and so the auto spacing thing put 341 here, put 146 here. That's cool. That works, right? 160, 169, 990, 944, that's fine. But 192, 387, that's fine. Oh, 38, it's a little screwed up, right? 28, totally screwed up. So again, when you use these graphing programs and you use the default, you know, automated uh, placement uh conditions that's cool start with that but then if it doesn't look right you got to change it right so in this case i would make that 38 be on top the 28 be on top right so small things like that will make it much easier much clearer to read maybe this is a candidate for our horizontal graphs right because we have text 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 so maybe horizontal what else beige why the hell do we need beige? Why can't we have this be white on this background? But then on top of that, we have yellow. What, how is that, what is that helping, how is that helping anybody, right? Ooh, 3D, ouch, there's magic floating numbers. I have no idea what that means. There's a random six somewhere here, and there's like a five, I don't know what that is. Ooh, ouch. So, yeah. Auto plot. That sucks, right? Don't do that. If this really is your graph and you really have this data so layered, it's probably going to be better for you to plot this in multiple windows. Do a plot of the light blue data and then do a plot of the purple data, right? At a minimum, you want to try that and see how that compares to this. Okay. Uh, the old, we haven't talked about the area plot. So, uh, but even though we haven't talked about it, it's K-I-H-G 
F-E-D-C-B-A. What? And something about page views. Right? So lame dates. This is, what the hell is this? We don't even know what this is. This is bizarre. Lame, sucky, blah, blah, don't do it. How about that? Do not use Excel for your graphs. <laughs> I'll just say that. Don't use Excel. We have other tools you guys can use. Yeah, it's like really amateur. Yes, super, my very first graph, right, kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, but setting that aside, again, setting all that stuff aside, check it out. 120 and zero, zero cents. $60 and zero, zero cents, right? Even with the limitations, maybe this is your nephew's first graphing thing even if he's doing that he can he can slice off these extra significant digits right that doesn't help at all this guy's got no money or maybe it's negative i can't really tell so that's lame right i think it's supposed to be zero but there's no zero shown that's right eight big graphics it, name comma name comma name comma year right again that, even if for some reason a terrorist had his gun to our head and said, you must use Excel to graph, this is lame, right? Even within the limitations of this generally lame tool, th this, is not, this is not acceptable, right? This is sloppy, this is lazy. Uh, that one's a bit blurry, let's skip that one. How about that one? Tigger weather. Looking for Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> what do you guys think? It says since April 2006, but then like, there's all a comparison on the graph. It's like, well, why? I don't know. If you're saying since April 2006, why do you have like January, February, March in there? Yeah. Right. So a, a good candidate possibly for a radar diagram, right? Because January goes to December, it's a circular thing. Uh, that, that is at least worth trying that. Um, yeah, okay, cool. Yay or nay? Do we like this or not like this? Yay. Okay, and what do you like about it? Okay, 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 so the lines are clearly distinguished. And again, this is not wrong per se, but could we take total and put total right here, you know, sort of at a 40 degree angle? Could we put petroleum in blue here? Could we put coal in green here? I mean, maybe that's lame, but I would at least try that and see if that's that much e any easier to read or not. Um, generally, we want, I think it's better to put what we measured and then the units in parentheses, for example. So maybe we call this carbon emissions, right? Or tons of car or carbon emissions. And then in parentheses, million metric tons per year. So that the first thing people see is the, is, is the main measurement and the units is sort of secondary. Here's another great case, zero. 2,000, 4,000, 6,000. We don't need to label every single one, right? And we would, we would all understand the pattern there. Yay or nay? Nay. Okay, what's, what, why don't you like it? Okay. Yeah, especially the black line, it just kind of like throws the background. Okay, so maybe hard to distinguish the line. So n remember, 
that, so that you're right, it is hard to distinguish it, but maybe that's the point. Maybe that's the point that here, it's hard to distinguish. They're kind of on, they're, they are on top of each other. Hard to see which one's which. But check it out. In 1880, there was difference. Starting in 1990, there is difference. So maybe that's the point. Maybe the point isn't necessarily to talk about the value, but rather the overall pattern of how there's divergence, divergence, and in this intervening period, there's generally fairly close um, agreement. Maybe, maybe not. Okay. How about this one? This one's definitely on top of each other. Have no idea what VEI, probably some kind of volcano, right? Right? But but there's but it's index one, index two, index three, index four, not not sure. Are those different volcanoes? Is that different ways to measure it? What? <laughs> pie chart, pie chart, pie chart. So this looks like we're going 2004, 2005, 2006, 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, right? So, so that's you know not incorrect to do a line, right? Linking the 2004 to the five to the six to the seven, but maybe not the most. Uh, easy to read. This sort of looks kind of uh, kind of cruddy. Now again, sometimes the data is the data, but it's. Are we supposed to have pictures in our graphs? It's supposed to make us panic. Yeah, it's supposed to make us panic. Are we supposed to have graphs in there? I mean, I mean, are we supposed to have pictures in the graphs? No. No. Cut it out. Another one we talked about. Some things. The color ramp is one generally that. You know. Yeah, yeah, clearly this is trying to get you freaked out, right? Getting you freaked out from low temperature, low saturated red, to higher, 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 more saturated red. So this is more of a argument, really, than really a objective data presentation. Um, and so, you know, it probably served the purpose for whatever this blog post or whatever it was, but, you know, not, not a great scientific figure. How about that? You like it? Don't like it? So you, okay, so you don't like it as a static figure? Yeah. Because why? So look, so this one doesn't even have an x-axis, right? But can you guys tell what the values are? Yes. So because everyone is labeled, it, you know, you know, I mean, it was graphed on a real x-axis, I presume, and so the the relative placement of the tops of the bar is uh, bars are are probably right. But I think this is a nice example of maybe you don't even need the axis at, at times if, if labeled. Now maybe you don't want to label every single bar every single time, but but at least. I think in the first pass, this says that, yeah, you don't always have to have a, a labeled, um, an axis or a labeled axis. It's inherent, since we have the percentage embedded by each number, it's inherent as to what the value is referring to. Anything else? American Journal of Botany. Uh, kind of hurts my head a little bit. First spring, second spring, third spring. Let's look at a couple more, then we'll call it a day. Ohio, thanks Ohio. Uh, rural development eligible areas. Like this one? Oh yeah. Yeah, uh, apparently th their jurisdiction includes mariculture or something, I guess. Yeah, they seem people are excited. Uh, 
Okay, how about this one? I think somebody lifted this from a textbook. So it's got pictures. But it's not necessary. Right. Like this, this wolf is pooping out some kind of red line, so we probably don't need him pooping out the line. The moose is pooping out a blue line. And what is the number? It's like of Yellowstone or something? Or right. What is going on? Right. So this is number of moose. This is number of wolves. So, so this red is to be read on this Y. We call this a YY or a double Y axis, axis which, is, which is, means that the value here still goes from low to high, but it, the, the actual numbers are totally different. And so the idea is to overlap this so that in one space, state space, we can still see the relative effect on one variable when the other changes. Again, we, we're including the year here. Do we really need that? We really need the year? Probably not. What's it, what's it telling us? What's it trying to tell us? Here's the day, uh, months of the year. And this is the presumably the number of uh, tornadoes. All right. So, how many tornadoes did we see in January? How many tornadoes did we see in February, etc. And then this is the um, uh, total value. And then this is the this is at di through different end dates. <laughs> so again, is it have a lot of data in here? Is it data dense? Is it elegant? Yes. Possibly. Possibly. Does it focus our attention on the key result or the key takeaway? What is that? Yeah. Okay, so there you go. So a little bit unclear, maybe. How about this one? Data dense? It's okay. I don't know if it's the most dense data, but it's, it's moderate. It's got one series of measurements in the bar, one series of measurements in the um, population. Population is shown with the line graph. The shoreline armor, even though it's going through time, is not shown with a bar, with a uh, me, line plot. Line plot, but no line plot. So those are only the years where it was actually sampled? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, only the years when it's sampled. So again, this is this is the axis, this is proportion of the total shoreline armored in the bar graph, and then the the, the line plot here is read over on this axis. Now, this is not quote unquote wrong, but you guys should note this does not go to zero. Right? Why does it not go to zero? Right, but I'm saying why, uh, this is what's plotted. The data that's plotted is from 1950 to, to whatever, to about to 2000. Why, how come this, the percentage goes from zero to 35? How come the population doesn't go from 500,000 to zero? Oh, because you, you would just have like a line kind of at the top. Because this would, this would compress this, space. right? This wouldn't look, this wouldn't look that dramatic. So the, this is selected to emphasize the change in population. Maybe that's okay, maybe that's not. In any event, you should, at a minimum, you should note in here, note uh, population does not go to zero, right? Because some people will look at this and, and visually, what does it look like? It looks like, whoa, we doubled or more than doubled the people. Did we? We went from about 275,000 to about 475,000. That's a significant increase, but that's, that's not doubling, right? It seems like the kind of stuff you'd see in newspapers because they want like that, that kind of image wow. to come across. Right, right. It's, it's dramatic. Right. Whereas, whereas the percentage of 
shoreline armored is pretty dramatic. Look, it's going from like, I don't know, eight to about 30. So it's, it's like, you know, three times more area uh, over this 40 year period. Okay. Last one. What do you think about that? The U.S., yes, we're totally divided. Our country is so divided. <laughs> Good question. So it says percent change, so it probably is percentages. So this is real gross domestic product. So so how many folks are contributing to the overall gross domestic domestic product in the U.S. on a statewide basis? Like whoever considers far west, far west, far west. Yes, everything is always relative to the East Coast. We know that, right? This is the Midwest. Like, what are you talking about, Midwest? What are you talking about? Uh, so, okay. Like it? Don't like it? Can you spin across the Can you spin across the map and and do your own comparisons? How coastal compared to inland? Mm -hmm. How the southeast compares to the Rocky Mountains? Okay, so you like it to be 2.8 to 6.3 percentage sign kind of thing? Yeah, or whatever it is. I don't like the way it's broken up. Yeah. You don't like the way it's broken up? I'd rather have like a red border, like a solid like Okay. Good, probably the year before, but good. So maybe you'd say something like annual percent change in real GDP by state, comma 2014 or something. Okay. All right. So, all right. That's enough. That's enough for this week. Um, we'll pick it up next week. <laughs>